This is a free video lesson from taughtly.co.uk for IGCSE First Language English. Now in this lesson we're going to have a look at question one of your First Language English paper one, which is the short answer comprehension questions. If you like this video lesson, then do consider heading over to my website where I have got more free resources, PowerPoints and video lessons. And actually this video is part of a longer course that I made for IGCSE First Language English. So I've got other stuff on there for summary writing and your question three, the writer's effect, writing narratives, writing descriptions, everything that you need to know basically and it is for free. So the link is down in the description. Do consider checking that out. Something really exciting that I want to share with you guys is that from September 2024 onwards, I will be dedicating more time to taughtly.co.uk in terms of trying to get out more video lessons, but also I will be offering one-to-one -one tutoring, small group classes, and some membership lessons. If you want to hear more about that, then stick around until the end of the video or go over to my website, taughtly.co.uk, where you can register your interest. Now this is what your paper one looks like and remember it is worth 50% of your overall mark for IGCSE First Language English. So you'll have two hours handwritten in which to answer three big questions and we are focusing on question one today where you will have to do the comprehension short questions and the next video lesson will all be about summary writing. After that you answer some more short answer uh, questions but they're more vocabulary focused and do the writer's effect language analysis question and then finally, your big question in your paper one is the extended response, which is where you read a longer text, usually a narrative, um, and you have to extend some of the ideas in that text, turning it into a diary, a letter, a newspaper, a magazine, a formal report, a speech or an interview. Yes, I remembered all of them. <laughs> um, so today we are focusing then on question one. As I say, I've got video lessons for all of these different questions on my website. So do feel free to check out the full free course if you want to know more. Now for the short answer questions, which is questions 1a to e, you'll read one short text, that's text a, and you will answer some short, basic comprehension questions. It is the easiest question on the first language paper, um, so don't spend too long in it. It's worth 15 marks, so spend about 15 minutes answering it. And I do recommend that you briefly read the questions first and then just quickly skim through to find the answers. Do not waste too much time on this question would be my advice. Firstly then, I'm going to ask you to skim and scan text A, but what do I even mean when I say skim and scan? How do you skim and scan? Take a second to think about that. So then, skimming is when you quickly glance through the text to get a general idea of its content. You have a look at it and you go, ah oh, yeah, this is a text about cats and cats in the wild whatever Cambridge have given you a question about. And scanning is when you're looking for something very specific. So basically you will skim the text, see basically what it's about, you'll read the question and then you'll be scanning to quickly find the answer to that question. So my advice then is really that you're not spending too long poring over this text in detail because for text day you only answer these comprehension questions on it and it doesn't come up again. Um, and the questions, as I said before, are the easiest ones. So don't spend too long reading this text in extreme detail. You don't need to be overly analytical. You're simply trying to find the answers to the questions and get out as quick as you can so that you can maximize your time later on and those more difficult texts and more difficult questions. Okay, so you know what skimming and scanning is, reading to get a general idea and, and scanning to find a specific bit of information. But here are some ways that you can skim and scan more effectively. Firstly, if you read the first and last sentence of the paragraph, that can give you a pretty good idea of what that paragraph is about. You can be looking around for main ideas and key points. If the question is asking you about advantages of being a gladiator, then you would look around and try and find a paragraph that seemed like it was all about the positives. You'll be searching for specific information. For example, if it's asking how many, then you know that you will be looking around for a number. Um, looking for numbers, dates and names. If it's asking you about a particular elephant, then you will scan around and have a look for the name of that elephant. Focus on keywords and phrases. So you know that the question is asking you about something very specific. Can you find that keyword or that key phrase in the text? 
Ignore irrelevant details, we call these distractors because they are trying to distract you from what you need to do. And some people do find it helpful if they use a finger or perhaps their pen as a pointer to help them quickly whiz through the text. To summarise then, my technique for answering questions 1a to e, the short answer questions, skim and scan the questions first and then the text before methodically working through question by question. Generally, the questions are in chronological order. So question 1a, will you'll probably find the answer in the first paragraph. Um, do highlight the answers as you go along so that if you've got time at the end, you can quickly check that you were correct. Like, oh, this is where I found the answer. Let me just go back over my highlight and make sure this is definitely what I think it's saying. Unless it says using your own words, you should directly copy from the text. In fact, you can even lose marks by trying to write it in your own words, being a little bit too clever, not using the right synonym, changing the meaning, and then suddenly you've lost the mark where you could have got the mark for using less brain power and just directly copying down the word. Um, Cambridge will say that using your own words and they usually put it in bold. Um, so unless it says that, just copy. There is no need to write in full sentences except for the last two explain questions. Um, the answers are usually just a word or a phrase, so there's no need to write a full sentence. You're wasting your time, you're not going to get any more marks for it. And just generally, I think to summarise that all up, don't waste too much time on this first question. It's worth 15 marks, but the marks are pretty easy and I would rather that you dedicated more time and energy and focus to those later questions. So are you ready to skim and scan? So we are going to read text A, which is called The History of the Marathon. Now here is our text, but remember my advice, I told you to have a look at the questions first. You can download this um, document, by the way, if you're joining me on YouTube, the link is in the description, it's for free on my website. So here are the questions. Just have a quick read through those. So two facts about the history of the marathon. Explain what the text means by collapsing due to exhaustion, ancient myth. Reread paragraph three, two reasons why the article suggests the marathon became popular again. Two ways in which the marathon has evolved in the modern day. Explain how previous marathon winners have attained success. And paragraph seven and eight, explain using your own words what the future innovations of the marathon might hold. So these are our questions. And you can even see that they are quite clearly in chronological order. So up here, we've got line six, then line seven, paragraph three, paragraph four, five, paragraph seven and eight. So we can go through really quite chronologically. Now, if you do want to put the tactic into action, feel free to skip ahead in the video lesson, but I'm going to read it out loud now. And I would highly suggest that if you are following along with me, have a copy of the questions open because you can even probably find those answers as I read through. Okay, text A, the history of the marathon. The marathon is a popular athletic event across the world. The history of the marathon can be traced back to the ancient Greeks, who used to organise running races as part of their religious festivals. The marathon, as we know it today, is inspired by the legend of Pheidippides a Greek soldier who ran from the city of Marathon to Athens. The story goes that Pheidippides ran the entire distance without stopping and exclaimed, we have won, before collapsing due to exhaustion, then dying. Mm. <laughs> Not the best story as it goes, I suppose, but at least he's got a long-lasting legacy of the marathon. Poor Pheidippides. However, some historians believe that the story is an ancient myth and that Pheidippides never existed. The first Olympic Games was held in Athens in 1896, marking a historical revival of the ancient sporting tradition. Among the various events, the marathon emerged as a symbol of endurance and human spirit. Spirited athletes from around the world embraced the challenge, and as they traversed the historic route, spectators witnessed an enduring testament to the power of sports, unifying nations through shared determination and sportsmanship. The marathon has undergone several changes over the years, with the distance being standardised to 42.195 kilometres in 1921. The course of the marathon has also changed, with some of the most famous marathon courses being the Boston Marathon, the New York City Marathon and the London Marathon. Yeah, I used to watch the London Marathon every year with my nana. The marathon now sees elite athletes competing for substantial prizes, aided by modern running gear, advanced training techniques and an evolving understanding of nutrition. The marathon has also seen several incredible performances over the years. 
The most famous of these is perhaps the performance of Ethiopian runner Abebe Bikala, sorry if I said that wrong, who won the gold medal at the 1960 Rome Olympics while running barefoot. Other notable performances include that of Kenyan runner Eliud Kipochoge, again, sorry if I said it wrong, <laughs> he tried, who broke the two hour barrier for the marathon in 2019 by doing intensive high altitude training, and the performance of Jean Benoit Samuelson, I did French at GCSC, so I think I said that one better, um, who won the first ever women's Olympic marathon in 1984. What sets her win apart is that she overcame a knee injury just 17 days before the Olympic race. Samuelson's resolve and mental toughness were on full display as she pushed through adversity to achieve the gold medal. Advancements in technology are set to revolutionise training and racing, with wearable devices providing real-time performance data and helping runners fine-tune their strategies. Sustainability is also gaining momentum, as marathon organisers embrace eco-friendly practices, aiming for more environmentally responsible races. Inclusivity is also a growing trend, ensuring that marathons remain accessible to people of all abilities and backgrounds. Virtual races born during the pandemic are here to stay, allowing participants to run on their terms and in their chosen locations. Now that you've read the text, if you haven't already found the answers to the questions and written them down, do do that because I am about to tell you the answers. So remember, spend no longer than 15 minutes on this. The answers are usually short words or phrases. There's no need to use full sentences. And unless it says using your own words, you can just directly copy from the text. So do pause now if you haven't already answered the questions, but otherwise I'm going to tell you the answers in a couple of seconds. Ready? Okay. Yeah, we're ready. Okay, let's go over the answers um, and let me make my head smaller. Um, so question 1A. Now this is the easiest question in the whole paper. It's simple retrieval as in copy from the text, right? Just directly copy. So you're going to retrieve one to two short pieces of information from the text and just copy it down directly. Now the question asked you about two facts of the history of the marathon and you must have two answers for one mark total because the answers are so easy to find and remember no need to write using full sentences. So firstly it can be traced back to the ancient Greeks and it was part of a Greek religious festival and it was inspired by the legend of Pheidippides. Those answers are all in the first paragraph. Now for the next section, honestly, sometimes I'm a bit baffled why Cambridge include this because it's the same type of question as your vocabulary questions on the questions 2A to C, but whatever. Um, basically, sometimes where students go wrong with this one is they get too clever and they think that Cambridge are asking them to analyse the words within the context. You don't need to do that. You are literally just giving synonyms. You are defining what the phrase means. Yes, you have to define it within the context of the sentence. So like your synonyms need to also match the sentence, if you see what I mean, um, but you don't need to analyse in any detail. So my top advice then is it will always have two or more words in. So do make sure that you give a synonym for both parts of the quotation. Um, so you are giving definitions and synonyms only. It must be using your own words. So don't reuse the word in your definition. So if it asks you, for example, to define modernization, don't say to make it more modern because then you've reused part of the word in your own definition so you wouldn't get the mark. Um, one other common mistake that I see, although it's not in this paper here, is that if the phrase is in past tense, then your definition also needs to be in past tense. So what got my year 11 students? It was something like um, smiled or something like that and they had to say um, like was grinning or something like that and if they didn't have the was for like was grinning, then they didn't get the mark. So just be careful there. So this was the question. Um, using your own words, explain what the text means by entire distance. So you need to give a definition for entire and a definition for distance, literally just synonyms. So for entire, you could have whole, ah, why have I got entire there? I need to change that. <laughs> whole, complete, full, all, total. And for distance, way, route, path, course, road, direction. So if you put the whole way, the whole route, the whole path, the whole direction, the complete road, all of the road, something like that, then you would have got two marks. And if you only defined one of those words, then you only got one mark. And if you define none of the words, congratulations, you got zero marks, sorry. Same here then for ancient myths, you need to define ancient and you need to define myth. 
So for ancient, you could have old, historic, traditional, or classic. Um, so obviously ancient doesn't always mean traditional, but in the sense of it talking about a myth, as in a traditional old story that was traditionally told in the past, see what I mean? You are defining the word in context where ancient doesn't usually mean traditional, but because it's being used to describe a story, then you can use it. Um, so I've already given you one of the synonyms then for myth. So you could have legend, fable, story, tale, narrative, or saga. Saga sounds um, really quite epic, doesn't it? Could you have had an epic? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Um, so if you wrote old story, historic story, traditional narrative, tra uh, traditional legend, traditional fable, then you could have that. Um, but you needed to define both of those words in order to get two out of two marks. Now for 1C and 1DI, again, this is a simple retrieval. So you are finding two pieces of information from the text um, and you need to make sure you're looking at the correct paragraphs. So maybe there might be answers that you could use, um, but if it's not in the correct paragraph, then it's not a correct answer. So just be careful there. So for 1C, reread paragraph three, give two reasons. The article suggests why the marathon became popular again, two possible marks. Um, so you could have had, it was a historic revival of an ancient sporting tradition or athletes traveled the historic route. So something about history, um, that's worth one mark. And if you've got both of those, you only get one mark, right? So if it's on the same line in the mark scheme, it's only worth one mark. So you don't want to repeat the same idea or a very, very similar idea because that might not get you the full two marks. Athletes from around the world were able to compete. The sport unified nations or shared determin determination amongst athletes. So something about people from all around the world, essentially, for the next mark. And finally, the marathon became a symbol, sorry, cat hair, just like floating around in front of my eyes. Um, the marathon became a symbol of endurance and human spirit. Um, so if you got three points, you still only get two marks, which my students think is very unfair, and I don't. <laughs> I don't think it's unfair. It clearly says it's worth two marks, so you only need two points. Why are you putting three things anyway? Moving on. Um, so next, 1DI, so again, we are just simply retrieving and copying down and you'll find the answers in paragraphs four and five. So here we are looking for two ways in which the marathon has evolved in the modern day. By evolved here, we mean changed. Or I guess there is um, a suggestion of improved. Evolved suggests getting better, doesn't it? Um, and it's a maximum of two marks. So you could have distance has been standardized course or route has been changed, substantial prizes are available, women can compete or women are allowed to compete, and something about modern technology such as running gear, advanced training techniques or evolved understanding of nutrition. If you just put modern technology that's fine, if you put um, improved running gear or advanced training techniques or evolved understanding of nutrition then that's also fine. So actually my mark scheme should look more like slashes like this um, because they're all separate points but they're all in the same bullet point so once again if you've got multiple of these congratulations good for you very proud of you but you can still only get a maximum of two marks all right now we are on to 1DII these are the explain questions um, and here we no longer have our bullet points to help us but actually there's nothing stopping you from still drawing on your own bullet points uh, my top bit of advice for this one which I say all the time and I feel like did I even say that? Because no one listens. Um, it's worth three marks, right? So therefore you have to say three different individual points. Some of my students still drive me crazy. Three mark question. They write one sentence. I'm like, how do you think that you were going to get three marks if you only said one thing? Um, so the number of marks tells you the number of different points that you need to make. Um, here you can use keywords from the text, but it should be mostly in your own words. Um, so here are some of the answers. Explain how previous marathon winners have attained success. Understanding of science or advanced training techniques for one mark. Being a pioneer, trying new things, running barefoot. These are all examples of something new. Commitment to intensive training or high altitude training. This is different because this one is advanced because of science and this one is commitment because it's hard and it hurts. So that's why they're two different bullet points. Um, and mental toughness, resolve, push on through pain or adversity. That's like internal characteristics. Um, notice that for this question, it's now starting to get harder. Some of these answers are implicit. That means that they're not 
clearly stated in the text you are reading in between the lines and inferring a little bit to get there. So for example, being a pioneer, you will not find the word pioneer in the text. That comes from you based on the fact that you're seeing that lots of these different athletes that are talked about in the, in the article are doing new things, they're trying new things. So that's you saying, oh look, they're doing lots and lots of new things, therefore they are a pioneer. And that word is coming from yourself that you have inferred from the text. So we're seeing it's now gradually starting to boil the frog in the pot, if you will. It's slowly getting harder. And question 1E, so the last question. Once again, here we are explaining three pieces of information from the text, and here it says using your own words. So it should be entirely in your own words. It is worth three marks, so you need to say three individual things, and there is nothing stopping you from drawing your own three bullet points on again, if that helps you. That's absolutely fine, but you should be using your own words. If you use one or two words from the text, like marathon, you can't really avoid saying marathon. That's no big deal, but if you're using lots and lots of words from the text, you are risking losing your points here. You might have the correct answer, but if it's not in your own words, the examiner won't give you the mark. The answers. Using technology, to improve pe using technology to improve performance, such as wearable devices or using real-time performance data. So anything about technology, um, that will be one mark, and anything about wearable devices or real-time performance data, that would also be one mark. Increasing focus on sustainability, the environment and making races eco-friendly, also one mark. And growing awareness of inclusivity, letting all abilities and backgrounds participate, one mark and virtual marathons. Now notice you might have ideas from elsewhere in the text, but this is asking you about paragraphs seven and eight, so you have to be focused there. And if you want to see how this looks on the original text, this here is where I planned it. So you can see that all of the answers are highlighted. If you're wondering where did she get that answer from, right here. And so you can see that as we go through, it is in chronological order with the first answers being here in the first paragraph, the vocabulary questions here in the second paragraph, these reread paragraph three questions, the blue questions, the explain questions, and over here paragraph seven and eight. So that's where all of those answers came from. Feel free to pause the video if you want to, I don't know, observe the highlights in a bit more detail. Let's summarize what we've learned today with our revision card. The key takeaways for the short answer questions, comprehension questions, questions 1a to e. So unless it says using your own words, you should just directly copy. Skim and scan the text, looking for the precise answers to the questions. Don't waste time analysing it in any particular detail. The number of marks that the question offers is the number of separate points that you should make. So if it's worth three marks, you need to say three different things to get the full three marks. And remember that when you are defining words, that you should not be using that word in your own definition. So it should be entirely in your own words. I hope that this was useful and do remember that you can find more like this on my website totally.co.uk. Find the full free IGCS e-course on there for both paper one and paper two. Exclusive content that is not on YouTube. Download the PowerPoints, the worksheets, the exam questions and take review quizzes to check that you actually understand what I have taught you. Now don't forget also that I will be starting my tutoring so you can find out more details about that on my website. I'm so excited to get started with you guys. There's going to be lots and lots of different options for different price points. If you would like to have one-on-one, -on -one, you can have some really, really personalised, intensive feedback time to focus on what you need and get advice. Perhaps that might be on your coursework or going over some past paper questions. And that's not just for IGCSE first language. I am also an experienced teacher of English literature at GCSE and I'm also an experienced IB teacher. I love teaching IB. So I'd be really interested to help you with your goals no matter what year group you're in. Maybe even you've already finished this, you're about to finish your IGCSEs, but next year you're doing IB or maybe you know some students that are starting their IB that need a tutor. Recommend me, <laughs> please. Um, we're also going to be doing some group classes. So those will be small group classes with limited numbers and you will get some feedback and marking on that too. And I'm also considering doing like a membership where you pay a set monthly fee, um, not too expensive, where you will be having live lessons with me and a group of other students around the world um, in the evening times, looking probably at times that suit people who are based in Asia, because most of the people who watch me are from India, Malaysia, China, etc. 
so um, probably evening times in those countries um, but go on over to my website because I'm filming this right now in March so this will be going up probably in April <laughs> and I don't like I don't have the specific details right now as I'm filming, but I'm really, really excited to get started. Um, there will be options there for you to register your interest and let me know that you're interested, get on the wait list so that you're first in line um, because the number of one-on-one -on -one classes that I'm gonna be offering, for example, are gonna be very, very limited. So if you are wanting one-on-one, -on -one, then do get your foot in the door first. And if you're thinking, but I don't wanna do tutoring with you, fine. Um, but <laughs> I am going to be having lots and lots more YouTube video lessons coming out. So yes, there will be some paid content like paid courses and tutoring and group classes. Um, but it's also really important to me that I keep doing free stuff too, because I know how many of you guys perhaps can't afford to pay um, for these extra lessons, but are doing like homeschooling or something like that. And you really rely on YouTube video lessons. So actually, although you're like, mm, I, you, you're going to make me pay. No, I'm going to be making, I'm making more stuff, like more free stuff as well for YouTube. Um, so please do stick around and recommend me to your friends. And hopefully I'll see you back here on YouTube or perhaps in a group class from September, 2024. Bye.